Hello, my name is Frida Pitfield. The sun rises, the sun sets, just as it always has. Not once has it failed. It may not always be visible, but it's there, even behind the clouds. And it doesn't come alone, because it brings hope, bright hope for each new day. Hope is a small, seemingly insignificant word, and yet we find it surprisingly hard to live without it. How often does hope pop into your mind throughout the day? We're constantly hoping for anything and everything, whether for a good day to work in the garden, snow to fall, spring to arrive, the Covid vaccination to begin the well-being of loved ones, or even a new hat. You name it, we hope for it. So can you imagine how it would be to live without hope? Recently, I was watching the news footage of the anniversary of the London Bridge attack, when one courageous young man, who had put himself at great risk to try and stop the attacker, said he could see in the eyes of the attacker that he was without hope. I began to think about the importance of hope. We all have days when we feel a bit low, when hope is hard to find. And there are many who live in dark and uncompromising situations today. Many who are in prison, on the streets, modern slaves, those who suffer from certain types of illness, refugees and others. And it's a desolate place to be. So here is a hope of mine that it might be true that for some at least that they will find hope to be irrepressible, that it will bubble up to the surface whatever their circumstances. We are living through strange times, a pandemic, a virus we cannot see that may affect anyone without warning. And it has seemed a hopeless, endless situation for the world to be in. And we will all have hoped that a vaccine will be found and made available as soon as possible. And now it's here. The vaccination programme will begin sometime this week. And hope can lead to prayer. These last few months, many will have hoped and prayed to God for the pandemic to come to an end. And we have hoped in the scientists. How thankful we are to God for answering our prayers and to the scientists for their meticulous and persevering work in finding a successful vaccine. However, these new vaccines have to be tested and so people are asked to volunteer to be given a trial vaccine and they are then exposed to the virus. So what was it that prompted them to volunteer? Was it a sense of altruism, public spirited unselfishness, enabled by hope? I have never read Paul Gallico's no novel, The Poseidon Adventure, or watched either of the films, but apparently the story tells of an ocean liner which has turned on its side somewhere in mid-ocean. The four passengers who survived can be seen sitting in the inverted dining saloon, talking together on the hopelessness of their situation. And then someone puts forward a rather unlikely means of escape. All four passengers discuss his idea, but three are reluctant. They hesitate. So the one with the idea tells them that he was once on a survival course where he was told that what kills most people who are caught up in a disaster is apathy. It's those who have no hope. 
So they do nothing to try to save themselves or others and they die. But if they will try to take action, well, they may die anyway, but there is just a chance they may survive. What is it that encourages the courageous in any situation but hope? Hope is stronger than optimism, but sometimes it needs to be twinned with courage. Barack Obama once used the phrase, the audacity of hope. In other words, the fearlessness, the bravery of hope. Advent is a season of hope. When we look forward to Christmas, to the family gathering together, although this may not happen for many this year. However, as we come to terms with this disappointment, our hearts not to be discouraged lift again in the hope that next Christmas will be spent with our loved ones once again. Advent is a season of hope as we remember that God loves us so much. He chose to come in person to be born as a vulnerable baby in a stable. And one day he will come again to take us to heaven where we will live forever in peace and joy. But where and above all other means of our daily hopes being fulfilled is our hope in an all-powerful God. As Advent nudges us to live with hope in our lives, it reminds us of the gifts that come from God. His care, guidance, protection, his constant presence, forgiveness, healing, his joy, which is so much more than happiness, and most of all, his love. St Paul tells the Romans, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, God is our hope. But it can be easy to lose hope, and especially when our prayers are not answered. Some might say hope is just wishful thinking, but if we look back on our own lives, or on world history, or on the history of God's working through his people in the Old and New Testaments, we can be inspired by God's activity in the past, of how he has brought us through our own struggles and difficulties, provided for us was always present even when we were unaware. If we possess even a tiny spark of hope for the future, then we will take comfort from knowing that in spite of all the disasters that may happen to us, God is there beside us and he's all powerful. From time to time, surveys have shown that those who go to church are among the happiest of people. Maybe it's because they hold many hopes close to their hearts, but above all, they hope and trust in God, and this will bring them peace. As we wait for the coming of God, the coming of the Saviour of the world this Christmas, let's keep this Advent hope alive in our thoughts and let's remember too God's faithfulness in the words of Thomas Chisholm. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be pardon for sin, and a peace that endureth, thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide, strength for today, and bright hope 
for tomorrow. Blessings all mine, with ten thousand beside. Amen. And thank you for listening. <laughs>